Welcome to the next episode of the Dark Web Deacon. Before we begin, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications. New videos are published every Monday and Thursday, and as always, be sure to like and provide comments. Over the last decade, the theme of the dark web and malicious hackers has become part of the mainstream. For this list, we will look at 10 films based on Rotten Tomatoes rankings, IMDb rankings, dark web content, and overall technical realism. Number 10. Charlie Danes is a veteran homicide detective. You're a dinosaur, Charlie. Now, he must catch a brutal killer. Dot Kill is a 2005 film. In the film, a detective tries to hunt down a serial killer who broadcasts his murders live on the internet. The film centers around old-fashioned NYPD detective Charlie Danes. Charlie is a morphine-addicted detective on the trail of a sophisticated psychopath who is setting up murders and broadcasting them live on the internet. Charlie systematically alienates everybody, family, colleagues, you name it, but finds an angle to approach the case. As he closes in on the killer, he realizes it has become personal and that he will be the final victim. The review of the film was mixed, with what was more of a TV quality script, along with a low budget and predictable story. If you like Fear.com and films like that, then definitely give this one a go. How many people seen this? Two million, maybe more. I want to look for cameras! With the clock ticking. The image is coming in from a cell phone. You just gave me a location before the poor man drowned! And the world watching. You think that's a game? Somebody just died! For one driven detective. And why can't this be one person? His only chance. There's one person operating alone. Ah! He's a classic brutal murder. Scene. Is to trust his instinct. Find somebody else! There is nobody else. The hell are Bauer Martino Studios presents... Armando Sante. Dot no! Q. Number nine. I'm just not ready to move on, all right? After the way she treated you? I never knew if I was truly in love. You can't afford that place, dude. You don't have a job. You spend all your time online playing with gadgets and video games. And I'm reviewing apps because I can make tons of money on YouTube. You know what, man? For a smart guy, you're also pretty naive. Awesome! I Lived is a 2015 film. In the film, a young online app reviewer's latest assignment mysteriously improves his life, but also starts to tear him apart. John Fox is a 20-something guy whose life is going nowhere. His girl left, his rent is late, and he lacks a real job. He's trying to make it as an app reviewer online, and decides to review a self-help app called I Lived for fun. He signs on, and immediately his life turns around. He meets the girl of his dreams, and gets a job offer he can't refuse. Convinced it's him and not the app, he signs out, and then loses everything. He signs on again, but this time the terms are different. The app is asking him to do things that are out of his moral comfort zone, but essential to becoming the success the app tells him he can be. The reviews for this film are mediocre. The biggest critique is that the concept was fantastic and very relevant, but overall film execution was poor. So this is worth a watch on a rainy Sunday when nothing else is on the DVR. Thing goes away. Where's your mom? She's in a coma. You signed a contract, made a deal. I never read it. They never do. I know what a user agreement is. You didn't sign your soul away on your iPhone. This thing is real. I don't know what this thing's doing in your head, but it's not responsible for what's happening in life. You are. You know, there are no shortcuts in life. Sometimes you just have to put the work in. One, two. You work for me now. You did this. Why? Thank God I found this thing, because I'm ready to finally start living. Number eight. Who is that? No matter how bad it gets, you're 12. I hate you. I hate you. No, 
Hashtag Horror is a 2015 film. The film is about the lives of six young girls, Sam, Georgie, Sophia, Francesca, Kat, and Ava, played by an ensemble of emerging actresses. Their world is one of money, success, leisure, and decadence. This is a film that is less of a horror film and more of a thriller with the backdrop around cyberbullying. Overall reviews for this film are generally mixed at best. This film does provide insight on the pressure that girls take on as they grow up in a world that is increasingly dependent on the promotion and attention that social media platforms provide. It takes on a manic effect later in the film that is not for the weak, and you definitely need a high tolerance for awful little girls while watching this film. If you are up for social commentary with slasher elements in a strange and gorgeous setting, then check this one out. It's never going to be okay ever again. Number seven. You guys are fucking disgusting. Whoever sent me that fucking gross ass tape. Dark Web Mystery Box is a 2020 film. This is not your typical linear film. The film is a series of random vignettes about people who receive mystery boxes from the dark web, which turn deadly for all involved. Dark Web Mystery Box is about as 2020 as you can get. Most of the film consists of various YouTubers and personalities opening up strange dark web mystery boxes in what appear to be fake videos. Then of course, chaos ensues. Because of the vignette nature of the film, there never is any true film flow, which may turn people off. However, the film is significant because it represents modern internet culture for sure. If you are a dark web junkie or, an, or just generally enjoy these ridiculous dark web mystery box videos, then this is worth a watch. Six. All right, lads. You know, my mind just has been blown recently since I got this new webcam. Oh, oh mate, I didn't even know it. Oh, I love my technology. Staying alive is my a love good song. Beginning, my oh, love has right now. oh man, this is my my fourth coat today. You know, Who, who's that? Who's what? Someone joined the call. Did they? Yeah. Unfriended Proxy is a 2020 short film with a runtime of 24 minutes. This film is set in the UK, and as we all know, an English accent makes everyone on the film sound smarter and be better actors. In the film, Sam and Ed Skype most nights, and when someone they don't know joins the call, they find themselves in real danger. The night starts off innocent enough, as Sam and Ed get ready for game night. Unknown caller joins the call and reveals Sam stole his webcam. He wants it back and begins to psychologically torment the teens, and then the virtual threats turn real. If you enjoyed the Unfriended series and are a dark web junkie, this is a great film to watch on a road trip or a flight when you have 30 minutes to burn. Yeah. He knows your name. Is this your friend that you unfriended? No, no, no. Who are you? And what do you want? Oh, game night is it's incredible. Number five. Chat Room is a 2010 film. In the film, jaded teens Jim, Ava, Emily, and Mo meet William online. They are seduced by his charisma, but William isn't what he seems. He's calculating and manipulative, and doesn't have time for people in the real world. Jim is vulnerable, 
and he has no idea how dangerous his new friendship with Willing will be. Jim is set on a path of self-destruction. As Ava, Emily, and Moe try to save Jim, William begins a terrifying game of cat and mouse, chasing them across the internet, shutting down their systems, and cutting them off from his victim. One of the best aspects of this film is the depiction of the internet into a physical space. It's very well done. It's not a horror movie, but rather a good psychological thriller, with the story of a disturbed teen who tries to alleviate his own misery by making others miserable. Trying to kill him. You are going to do this. And we all implicate him. Just leave me alone. This is sick. You get in my way, and I'll make your life hell. I need to finish this. We all live in the age of information. We're sitting on the most perfect beach in the world, and all we can think about is where... Where can I hook up my bottom? Every trace of our existence is computerized. Everything about us is encoded somewhere on a complex network of information. Computers your life, aren't they? Yes. Perfect hiding place. The Net is a 1995 film. This is a nostalgia pick for sure, and came out when Sandra Bullock was a rising star. She won Best Actress at the Juniper Awards for this film. This is 1995, remember. Most people did not know what the internet was, let alone identity theft, so this film was way ahead of its time. Angela Bennett, played by Bullock, is a computer expert. A friend whom she's only spoken to over the net and the phone, Dale Hassman, sent her a program with a weird glitch for her to debug. That night, he left to meet her and was killed in a plane crash. Angela discovers secret information on the disc she has received. Her life then turns into a nightmare. Her records are erased from existence and she is given a new identity, one with a police record. She struggles to find out why this has happened and who it has it in for her. Despite being 25 years old, this is a very watchable film. Also, this was one of the first films ever made about hacking and identity theft, so definitely worth a watch just because of that. And erasing her identity. We've got an outstanding warrant for a Ruth Marks on federal charges. I am Angela Bennett! Just give us the disc and we'll give you your life back. She has the evidence. She's got me the disc. Have a go. But they have the power. This summer, Sandra Bullock is caught in the net. Number three. I love this song. Cam is a 2018 film. Cam received several awards at various film festivals for such categories as Best Actress, Best Screenplay, and Best First Feature. This film is about an erotic webcam performer who finds her followers have been stolen by a doppelganger who hijacks her channel, pushes the sexual envelope further, and otherwise seems determined to destroy her life. Think of this film being about identity theft of the possible supernatural kind. Most reviewers agree that Cam is an interesting and entertaining film with modern subtexts, but the ending was a little lackluster and felt forced at times. So I say forget the ending and enjoy the overall dark and twisted idea behind this film. But I don't know what it is. You stole my face and now I'm going to get it back. You stole my face and now I'm going to get it back. Number 
two. Dark Web is a 2020 eight-part miniseries nominated for six Daytime Emmy Awards, including for Best Digital Drama Series and Best Director. In the series, a programmer's mysterious disappearance leads to the reunion of old friends and the discovery that the strange story she left behind may hold clues to an impending technological crisis. Dark Web has layered stories within a story, with each episode introducing a new character to join in the search for Molly. And through that journey, we see each character develop not only within themselves, but also with each other. The feel and energy of this series is a combination of Twilight Zone and Outer Limits, with a twist of Black Mirror. While not a true feature film and a miniseries, I really enjoyed this, and I felt like I had to add it to the list, and highly recommend it. I feel like we don't have a choice here. We have to find her. There's something going on. What the hell did she get us into? Let me start at the beginning. People think they're safe. They aren't, Leland. The world is changing. And so are you. No one else will get hurt. You will get hurt! It is dangerous, okay? What did you do with her? You emailed us those stories. You, you left the clues and let us hear. Why? The world's a bad place. Hi guys. Hey, Darina. Caroline. Hi, Teddy. Hi. <laughs> Let's do a shot after us. Okay, everyone, get in. Three, two, one. Have you ever done anything like this before? I've never done this but over Zoom. Obviously, we're not physically together, but there's no reason why Spirit can't communicate over the internet. Host is a 2020 film. Maybe it was because of the lockdown, or the lack of new movies, that definitely made this a very enjoyable film. Be warned, this is more of a short film with a runtime of just under 60 minutes. The plot is simple. Six friends hold a seance on a Zoom call, then everything starts to go horribly wrong. All the characters of this movie are fairly cliche horror characters, but in an hour you're not really going to care or root for any except for being scared for them at a human level. It is acted incredibly well for a horror movie, and that's really all that matters to make you believe in the plot. Also, it is edited, crafted, and scripted well. Yes, there are some conveniences the script takes, but they are worth looking over for a short film. And while this is more of a horror and paranormal film than one centered on the dark web, the use of technology as a critical plot vehicle was enough to get it on my list. This gem, which was made on a shoestring budget, is a must-watch in the Dark Web Deacon's book. Oh, Emma, no. how funny. There's something. You know, we've connected with something. We gotta keep going, we gotta talk to it. This is not good. I told you not to disrespect the spirits. It could be something demonic. Hey, this is all you want! I'm about to turn the filters off. Come on. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, subscribe, and provide comments, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell in order to check out future videos published twice a week.